Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rani Asnat, VP of Strategy and Product Marketing at Aqua Security, and I'll be the moderator today for our session. Um, very pleased to have with us uh, Dan Nurmi, uh, CTO at Anchor, and Rory McCoon, uh, Cloud Native Security Advocate at Aqua Security. Hi, guys. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Daniel, you go first. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having us to uh, talk about this important topic today. My name is Daniel Nermi. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Anchor, and we're a company that was started um, around the time when containers were really starting to, to pick up steam. And what we do here is produce technology, open source and, and products that really aims to help organizations who are adopting modern development techniques um, to, to introduce security compliance, best practices directly into their, their DevOps tool chains. So very pleased to be here and uh, I'll be talking to you today. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Rory? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, my name is Rory McCune. Uh, I'm a cloud native security advocate at Aqua. And uh, we are essentially focused heavily on the cloud native and container ecosystems and really help helping customers as they go through their lifecycle, moving more into cloud native and into containerization and secure that entire process. And I'm really glad to be here to talk about this. It's, it's an issue that's, I think, attracting a lot of attention at the moment. Right. And today, our topic of discussion is software supply chain attacks and uh, why they matter and what DevOps need to do. Um, and, you know, this is uh, something that has obviously taken uh, a lot of uh, uh, attention, received a lot of attention recently. Um, why, why is there a focus on the supply chain right now? Um, I guess, Daniel, you start. Sure. Uh, you know, th this, this is, a, as Rory was mentioning, you know, really a topical, uh, you know, uh, discussion that's been going uh, on in, in a lot more focus, especially over the last six months to a year. And I think part of the reason is that, well, there's been, you know, simply some high profile security events that have happened. Right. Um, you know, things around, uh, you know, uh, code cub and solar winds and, and other types of very high profile, large impact, large blast radius security events. And, uh, and a lot of that, you know, the discussion after the events started to, to ask the, the pertinent questions, you know, what happened here? What, what's happening? Why is this something, you know, uh, that, that's, that's starting to affect so many uh, organizations when the actual impact or the actual event happened in a very focused location. And, and some of that discussion has really started to formulate around this topic of supply chain security. And so, first of all, I think these high, high profile events really start to focus the discussion whenever they happen. Uh, but in addition, I think a lot of this has to do actually with the adoption of modern development infrastructure techniques where there's a lot more automation. There's a lot more software that's actually being combined uh, to produce applications that ultimately run in production. And the industry started to really focus on all of the processes that are used for automating a lot of the development and, and delivery of applications and trying to figure out with, with that automation, there's been sort of an increase of the amount of software, the dynamism of these types of systems and how it's all coming together and we really need to focus on that process of building these applications because that's part of a more general global supply chain. And that's where these events have really been focused on. So I think that's why this is a topic of discussion right now. Right. And, and Roy, anything to add to this? Yeah, I think there is. I think that it's a good point that we are seeing a lot of this now, but this has been building for a while. You know, this is this move and this change has been, I actually did a talk strangely enough, on this kind of topic six years ago at an OWASP AppSec conference, looking at um, things like NPM and Ruby gems and how those package supply chains were secured. And so this, to me, has been something that, whilst it has hit the prevalence now, like a lot of security incidents, I think a lot of security people probably were thinking this is going to happen sooner or later. I don't even kind of maybe warning about it and talking about some of these topics. I mean, actually, I, I actually while reading, prepping for this, I went back to a quote, and the very first time I think it was mentioned, 1984, Ken Thompson said, you can't trust code you did not totally create yourself hmm. in reflections on trusting trust. And so this is like a lot of security, this has been going a long time, but what we're seeing now is, as Daniel was saying, just the huge adoption has led to inevitably attackers follow adoption, right? Atta attackers will follow the process of, I, this is where people are, this is therefore the attackers go, this is where I want to be. 
and then we get incidents. So yeah, I think that's where I see it coming from. Right, and you know we've seen uh, very recently there was an executive order uh, from the you know in, in the United States, um, and you know given this, you know what do we see? How do we see the open source community responding? Um, what's coming down the line, and how will this impact uh, DevOps as we as we stand today? Yeah, I think I think this is an interesting one, right? So, uh, sort of building on what what Rory was just talking about, right? This not being necessarily like, you know, a fundamentally new um, uh, topic, but there's there's been so much more software that you know the one of one of the events that came out of a lot of the the security incidents, you know, over the last year year and a half or so, was this U.S. Uh, executive order where it's essentially a, a laundry list of the same type of security and, and compliance um, mandates that the security industry has been talking about for, for a long time. But it started to kind of focus it in and, and codify it and actually, you know, recommending some some actual requirements uh, for U.S. federal projects to be able to um, or to actually be required to ask for information and proof of security process from any software projects coming into to their projects, right? And so it's almost defining a little bit more of a formal way to describe, you know, as there's a whole community of software producers, as a software consumer, these are the kinds of things we're gonna start requiring from the software producers.